Hey there, my friends. Today is going to be a really unique video for me. I'm going to be sharing my personal reflections and reactions to this novel by my grandfather. So my grandfather, Keith Lahmer, was a very prolific Silver Age science fiction writer, which means his time of greatest productivity was the 60s and 70s. He's really considered a writer's writer, someone who's very influential for future generations. It's rumored that George R. R. Martin, the author of, you know, you know, um, Game of Thrones, was a big fan. He's uh, rumored to have said Keith Lammer was a great writer. And Keith Lammer, my grandfather, invented characters and symbols and ideas that have really been seen in future works like the war machines he invented called bolo which we've seen manifested in the movie avatar and other science fiction and fantasy works and he's also credited with really starting steampunk which he referred to as victorian futurism and his book worlds of the imperium I believe published in 1961 was really the first manifestation of that. So super cool dude, very influential and extremely prolific. And this is going to be my reflection and reaction on this book I just read called A Plague of Demons. This is not the first book by any means of his that I've read, but it was the first one that really I really loved from an artistic standpoint and was super eye-opening for me as a granddaughter. I have great respect for my grandfather. Um, my family sort of split in a way uh, back, back in the day before I was born. Keith Lammer was for most of his life an atheist. He was extremely, extremely intelligent and um, believed in, you know, rationality and science and was not a fan of religion or spirituality at all. And my grandmother was, and uh, they sort of split their separate ways. And, you know, the family story is kind of that that was the, the final straw. Though um, it's interesting because from my mom's perspective, he did become a person of faith towards the end of his life. Um, and my mom is very spiritual, but it took her a long time to, to embrace that side of her because when she was a child and her parents split, she really respected her father more, you know, and thought, well, he's smart. He doesn't believe in God or anything, so uh, I'm not going to either. And eventually she changed and she's very spiritual. But um, yeah, he, he lived a rather isolated life in his older years. Um, he had a stroke when he was in his 40s. He had um, uh, sort of a lack of emotional elasticity, and so he really pushed away a lot of people. You can do research on this. There's lots of like blogs and stuff about his eccentric character. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a background of like why this book was so beautiful and intriguing to me. First off, is the back jacket I thought was really spot on. Like I thought it was really timely. So it's Felix. All of his books are very like action packed and all these like smart and humorous guys who are very like irreverent towards authority and stuff. And they're always throw, th you know, throwing punches and stuff. You know, it's like super, super like comic book male oriented action pack. So Felix was saying when the demons entered the restaurant, for 20 years, I've been expecting a surreptitious war fought not on battlefields or in space, but in the streets and offices of apparently peaceful cities, a war of brainwashing techniques, infiltration, subversion, and betrayal. And, you know, for anyone who's familiar with JFK's speech, where he talks about a, a war of infiltration, uh, of subversion instead of invasion, 
and hybrid warfare and uh, intellectual warfare, like this is so spot on. This is so interesting. And this was written in 1964. I don't know how much of that he was already aware of or was just sort of like picking up on what the future was going to be like. Anyway, he says it's been in the air, this war of brainwashing and subversion, a vast insanity that's kept us flogging away nation against nation, race against race, with the planets at our fingertips. So there's been this injection of a war that keeps people divided in a quiet and unsettling way when at our fingertips the celestial orbs of the planets and expansion. So that really got me into this book. I started reading it. And what struck me first off was the realization, spoiler alert, that the bad guys in this book are not human. They sometimes look human, but they're machines. And I I found this to be a very pro-human novel. And I realized most of his work, the bad guys are not human. And I found that really comforting and beautiful because I think the bad guys are human. Like, there's nothing so scary as, you know, a true sociopath, especially if they have wealth and power and influence and that sort of thing. So, but in my grandfather's world, humans were the heroes, even if they had been brainwashed or were in a a state of servitude, um, the humans are the good guys. And I thought that was really hopeful and beautiful. Something else that struck me early on was his evident affection, and I'm reading this through the the mind of his protagonist that I'm sure is some sort of projection of himself, you know, the smart, tough guy who figures out his way uh, through all of these challenges. His evident affection for a character named Joel, who is, is really big and really strong and really dumb. He's really dumb, but he's intuitive. He's the only other character that we know of who um, can see the demons for what they are. The demons can, can sort of put themselves in human garb or project themselves as humans, and only the protagonist and Joel can see them for what they are. And I know my grandfather was super smart, just brilliant intellectually and he chose to live in Florida he inherited property like I'm sure there are practical reasons for living there was very beautiful but it was super not cosmopolitan like he was not surrounded by intellectual peers at all it was super backwoods backwater type of place and that seems strange to me as a granddaughter like why would someone so smart um who already had a lot of challenges i told you he had a stroke and everything like choose to spend his life somewhere where he didn't really have intellectual peers or friends like that seems very isolating and i was touched by the affection that he has for this character who's not very smart and it really made me like see my grandfather differently once again this pro-human idea like this this love for humanity and what we realize later in the book when Joel is freed from his physical form but he still his consciousness still exists you have to read the book, but the, their minds are, are um, implanted into machines. You realize, it's, you discover that he was only dumb because he had an injury that put pressure on a part of his brain. And when, when he was liberated from that, 
though he still lacked a degree of education that he had not had a chance to acquire in his physical form, um, his, his mind was opened up and his intelligence increased because he was no longer oppressed, right? A physical pressure is a form of oppression. So he was dumb only because he was oppressed, suppressed, and underprivileged. It was not able to acquire, you know, book learning and you know, learning how to do arithmetic and all that. So I thought that was very beautiful and very interesting. Um, there's a bit of time travel. It's very fun. All of these characters from different countries and different times in history find themselves all together serving on this galactic army. And I recently read um, the Arabian Nights, all the, you know, tales from a uh, thousand and one nights. And I'm not the first person to see this correlation, but I do see a great similarity between you know, the magic genie popping out of the bottle and wishing, giving you your wishes and science, like the technology that's at our fingertips to like press a button or say, hey Siri or whatever, Alexa, you know, bring me this, bring me that. And of course in this science fiction book, it's, it's even more heightened, like there are machines that can do surgery and, um, you know, teleport you places and stuff like that. Um, and there are also like some some characters that show up in this time travel element that reminded me of characters in the Tales from Arabian Nights. So that was really fun. And in that, so I, I told you there, well, let me talk about this too. So in that same idea of being pro-human, what's happening is there are demons from another planet that are hijacking the brains of humans to use in their machines, in their war machines. And again, there's that pro-human idea that a human brain is infinitely more complex and capable than any machine that can be built, right? And it also kind of strikes me as the, the opposite of AI and transhumanism where, you know, there's, you know, discussion about upgrading human brains. So we have physical forms, human forms, but our brains are somehow enhanced through technology. And in his story, it's really the opposite. They are in human forms, but the brains are humans because humans are the best. And uh, again, that just goes to the pro-human. But something else I thought was super interesting is that even though my grandfather was not a person of faith or spirituality, and everything is rational and science and material, to be human in his world is not a matter of having a physical body because the characters at some point in the book they don't exist anymore in physical form they are literally robots physically but their minds are still their own so it's like he's making the case that our consciousness is actually who we are not our bodies and not our the time period we were born, not the people we married or lived with. Like, who we are is truly just who we are and our minds and our consciousness. And, and as a person of faith, like, I have overlap with that. I, I believe that, I don't believe we are our personality, but I do believe we are our consciousness and that that will live on beyond our physical forms and that we will be able to communicate with loved ones and that sort of thing, which also happens in this book. They have a mind-to-mind -mind communication once they are liberated from their physical forms. 
So those are some of my thoughts on A Plague of Demons. I totally recommend you read it. Uh, my grandfather wrote over, credited with over a hundred titles, really interesting man. And now that my eyes have been open to some of these themes in his book, I may be doing more reviews and sharing with you here. I hope you have enjoyed this. As always, please remember to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you did and check out some of Keith Lomer's work. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.